Students, are you able to hear me and see the slide? Yes, sir. Okay, I, actually I have to change the system that I've been using for taking the lecture. So I just wanted to see, be sure that uh, you're able to see it. Okay, so from this lecture, we are going to start a new module and this module is going to be on filters and this will be basically filtering out uh, certain frequency uh, signals. So that is why these are called frequency filters. They are also called uh, electrical or electronic filters because uh, they are implemented in this domain. So as I pointed out in uh, the first class that there will be few uh, sets of circuits that we will be studying in this course. First was of course the amplifier. So up till now whatever we uh, studied they were related with the amplifiers. From this lecture we are going to start a new set of circuits. Uh, they are called uh, filters. So we will spend around uh, six classes on this and uh, we, we will also try to see what are the design steps involved in designing uh, filters. So in this lecture we will uh, see what are the filters and uh, why we need them and then uh, what are the various classes of uh, filters. We will see that the filters uh, they are classified into various classes based upon the uh, various characteristics uh, related with the filters. And then uh, we will quickly see filter design steps and uh, trace uh, some of those steps in, uh, uh, in this lecture. But uh, we will uh, go through these uh, steps the step 4 and uh, part 4 and part 5 especially uh, in uh, future classes uh, in much more uh, detailed version. So even if you are not uh, feeling very comfortable with the uh, part 4 of this lecture, do not worry, we will again uh, go through them in great detail. So what are filters in terms of uh, electrical engineering. So filter is a, a two port network like an amplifier. There will be one input port where we will provide a input signal say VIS. Here S is the complex frequency. So we, uh, we will be using both omega and uh, S interchangeably. And this will produce an output uh, on the second port. So what this uh, filter will do is that suppose uh, you provide uh, input of certain frequency then it uh, may be allowed and uh, can reach to the output port depending upon the nature of this circuit or it might be completely stopped also. So what we see on the output uh, will be decided by the nature of this circuit in terms of uh, frequency of the input not the amplitude. So whatever uh, circuit we discuss up till now, uh, the amplifier, they act on the amplitude aspect of the input signal and ideally they should not uh, distinguish the signal with respect to frequency. But here this circuit uh, overlooks the amplitude, it uh, does not respond to the amplitude of the signal. Of course, but in the real life signal should be sufficiently strong, but ideally it is uh, immaterial. But uh, filter, this circuit will uh, be uh, very, uh, say, choosy about what is the frequency of the input signal. So some of the signals will be allowed if they fall under what is called the passband of the this uh, filter circuit. 
or they might be completely blocked or uh, greatly attenuated. That means greatly reduced uh, by their amplitude uh, when they reach on the output side. So this is the filter, and uh, like uh, amplifier, this circuit is also characterized by what is uh, called transfer function, which is simply the ratio of output to the input. So given this definition, uh, one can find out the output uh, simply as the product of uh, transfer function and the input signal. And uh, this product uh, uh, is implemented in what is called frequency domain, not in the time domain. And this, the last equation, this also says that uh, filter circuit is uh, fundamentally linear. So that is what uh, the title of this slide says. It is linear the last equation and two port network it has simply input and output now why we need uh, filters for that uh, let us see a typical uh, scenario that uh, is encountered in a communication system that means uh, we have our say message signal which is centered at 900 megahertz uh, uh, with the bandwidth of uh, 200 kilohertz and uh, in the neighborhood, in the right, uh, on the right side of uh, this uh, message signal, we have another uh, signal which we do not want. So what we need is we need a system which will be able to allow only this desired signal to pass through it and reach to the amplifier and subsequent stages where it will be processed. And it should be able to block the uh, neighboring unwanted uh, signal. So here we need a filter. Suppose we have a filter which has this kind of uh, frequency response, then it will be uh, allowing the desired uh, signal to pass through it, but it will block the unwanted signal. So the basic idea of uh, need of filter is uh, very simple to block uh, certain uh, unwanted signal. Now, uh, one of the locations uh, where you will find this uh, filter is in uh, what is called transceiver. That means a uh, pair of uh, transmitter and receiver. So this uh, pair or transceiver is uh, uh, present in all the wireless communication system, for example, in our uh, cell phone also. So here we have antenna and this antenna uh, is uh, typically a, uh, is uh, capable of receiving or picking various uh, frequency components which will be present in the environment around it. But the receiver or the user will actually want only some of them. So we need a filter here uh, so that uh, out of whatever signal uh, large uh, frequency component that is picked by antenna, only some of them are allowed uh, to reach to the uh, receiver. Uh, person who is uh, trying to receive a certain signal. Not only that, it will also uh, block the, the signal that is being uh, uh, intended for antenna to again come back to us. So these are the two locations where filters are required. But actually, uh, filters are present in a very uh, large number of locations, not only these two. Now, uh, since we understand what filter does and why it is needed, uh, uh, it is important to understand uh, what are the various uh, uh, subclasses of uh, filters possible. So, as I pointed out, actually they are uh, classified on uh, uh, various aspects of filters. So, if you pick any aspect of filter, there will be a number of subclasses. For example, if we try to classify filter based on frequency response, uh, that means if you plot the transfer function with respect to frequency, then there are four major classes, uh, band pass filter, low pass filter, high pass filter, and band stop filter. So this classification is based upon uh, what are the frequency component which will be allowed to reach to the output side or alternatively, what are the frequency components which will be suppressed? That means they will not be allowed to uh, go to the output uh, side. So mathematically, when we try to uh, represent this transfer function, it uh, 
uh, it's represented by only a few number of uh, mathematical uh, expressions and those expressions were proposed by certain mathematicians for example by Butterworth, Chebyshev. So uh, based upon the uh, mathematical nature of the transfer function and that is also called passband approximation and we will see that why we are using the word approximation here. The filter, uh, the same uh, complete set of filter will now get classified into these three categories. Now, once we know the transfer function of a uh, filter, say, or in other words, if we know a uh, mathematical uh, function HS, then the question arises, how do we implement this thing in real life? That means, uh, what will be that circuit which will uh, uh, actually give me a behavior uh, similar to what we have uh, picked up in step two or the, the class two, that is HS. So we know that uh, there are few standard components which are used in uh, electronic circuit. Those are the pa uh, passive uh, RLC circuits and then semiconductor uh, devices, uh, that means uh, amplifiers. So based on what are the uh, uh, sets of these components uh, being used for implementing the circuit, the uh, filter circuit get uh, classified into two broad categories, that is the passive uh, filters where only RLC components will be there and uh, active filters where there will be uh, semiconductor devices, uh, particularly the amplifier will be present and uh, predominantly uh, resistors and capacitors will be also present in the uh, circuit. So as the name suggests here the active circuits, they will active uh, filter circuits, they will not only be uh, carrying out the filtering because uh, fundamentally they are the filter so that thing they have to anyway do. They will also be amplifying that means the, uh, the whatever signal they are allowed to pass on to the output side, they will uh, be also of larger amplitude compared with the uh, same frequency component present on the input side. So in that sense, uh, this filter uh, does two jobs, filtering and amplification both simultaneously. And in many cases, such type of filters will be uh, desirable because amplification is uh, inevitably required in various uh, uh, locations uh, in the say receiver path. And uh, since we are representing a filter with a transfer function and uh, uh, these transfer function uh, uh, numerator and denominator, they will be basically polynomial and a various degree. So the uh, transfer function of the filter then gets uh, classified into various uh, classes based upon the order of those polynomials. So then filter also they get classified into first order, second order, third order, so on and so forth. And we will see that uh, uh, these will have uh, certain desirable uh, uh, consequences on the filter behavior. And this, uh, finally the filters, they are also classified based upon the, what is the nature of the signal, input signal that they are handling, whether those signals are continuous or whether they are uh, discrete. So the filters uh, get classified into continuous time filter or discrete time filter. So we will see an uh, example of uh, uh, some of them, especially one to four. And we will also see ultimately in this course how to design them also. Now we will see the various uh, classification of those uh, filters uh, that we discussed just now in a little bit more detail so that we have a better feel. So first is, as I pointed out, based upon the uh, frequency response or the plot of the transfer function. And here uh, they have been uh, labeled as ideal. That means ideally this is what we want, but we will see that in real life, uh, we actually never succeed in achieving exactly this kind of response. So this is the first uh, way of classifying and the most popular way of classifying filters that is based upon the uh, passband or that is also called the uh, frequency response or the uh, plot of the transfer function. So here uh, you can see that this blue color is uh, uh, 
uh, going to be the plot of ideal uh, transfer function h and uh, from uh, zero frequency up to omega p uh, the, all the signals they will be allowed to uh, reach to the output side of the circuit and that is why this band of frequency from zero to omega p that is called the pass band and rest all other frequencies above omega p they will be completely stopped so the this is uh, on the right hand side we have stop band and this is called pass band since the low frequency components starting from zero up to certain uh, mid frequency they are being allowed so this type of filter uh, is called low pass uh, filter now we have uh, uh, it's a complement that means we can have a filter which will actually block uh, frequency components from 0 to omega p but will it will allow all other frequency components above omega p to reach to the output side so we now have a passband which starts from omega p and ideally goes up to omega is equal to infinity so here what is happening uh, only the high frequency components are being allowed to pass so that is why this is called a high pass filter and uh, so these two are the extreme that means they pick uh, one uh, part of the complete spectrum either lower part or the higher part then we can have a filter which will pick uh, uh, a certain uh, band that means neither lower nor the highest but somewhere in between uh, these two extreme it will pick the uh, frequency components and allow them to pass so for example here we can have a uh, filter which will allow frequency components starting from certain lower frequency omega p1 up to omega p2 to pass on the output side and it will block uh, frequency components below omega p1 and uh, above omega p1, p2 so we have a uh, lower stop band upper stop band and uh, between these two there will be pass band so this uh, frequency uh, filter is allowing a band of frequency to pass so that is why this is called band pass uh, filter now we, one can have uh, its complement that means a filter which uh, actually blocks all the frequency component given between two limits say omega s1 and omega s2 and then it allows all the frequencies below omega s1 to pass and all the frequencies above omega s2 to pass so since it uh, stops a band of frequency this is called stop band and uh, keep in mind that all these uh, uh, responses they are the ideal that means this is what we actually ideally want from a filter but uh, if someone tries to implement them in real life uh, we will get uh, responses uh, shown here so here one thing you can note is that uh, in the previous uh, uh, ideal responses we have a sudden transition from pass band to stop band right so that means uh, there will be frequency which will be allowed to pass and then suddenly on the lower side uh, there will be no frequency uh, uh, which will be allowed to pass to the output side so all the frequency in the stop band they get multiplied by 0 all the frequency in pass band they get multiplied by 1 but what happens in real life it is that in the pass band of course uh, the frequency component they will get multiplied by a quantity which will be very close to 1 you will see that that is also not always 1 but then uh, before uh, they start getting multiplied by a number like 0 in the stop band there will be region that is called transition band over which they will get multiplied by significantly uh, a large number say by 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 so on so forth and it will decay up to say 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 uh, very rarely it uh, reaches to 0 if it, even if it reaches it will reach to extremely high frequency so the biggest uh, problem with practical filter is that there is a wide transition band. Transition band is the band uh, where frequency components will be allowed to pass but not fully but at the same not uh, by zero amount also. 
and this uh, uh, creates problem in filtering. Now you can see that the frequency components uh, falling in the transition band, they will also be present on the output side in significant amount. So from uh, pass band to stop band, there is a significant band of transition. And ideally we always want this band to be uh, zero. Okay. So given this that uh, uh, we have an issue of transition band, uh, then uh, when uh, someone specifies a uh, specification for a filter to be designed, there are certain parameters that they have to specify so the designer can proceed and uh, design as per that is specification. And uh, one has to incorporate non-IDLTs of the filter. So we have already seen a transition band for the uh, practical filters where attenuation uh, will gradually uh, become low. In addition to this transition band type of non-IDLT in the real filter, there are two more issues with the real life filter that even in the pass band, uh, they will not get multiplied by one. The input signal not get multiplied by one. Rather, there will be a parameter which will fluctuate. Of course, this fluctuation will be very small. That means in the best case, it will be equal to one and in the worst case, it will be maybe equal to 0.9. So all these uh, pass band frequency component, they will get multiplied by a number which will vary between one and uh, say 0.9 or 0.8, that part we can decide. So that is uh, called pass band ripple. Similarly, in the stop band also, <coughs> this signal or the transfer function value does not uh, fall to zero uh, very uh, soon, but it, it actually undergoes fluctuation before it decays to a very small value. So when we, uh, as a user and specify the filter to be designed. We talk about this pass band ripple, transition band, stop band attenuation, and stop band ripple. So all these parameters are required uh, before we can uh, uh, finalize even the transfer function, and then before we can uh, implement it using uh, RLC or maybe amplifier. So this uh, uh, is called uh, specification template. And this is uh, the always the starting point for any filter design. Now we will see the second way of uh, classifying the filter. Uh, as I pointed out, uh, ideally we want a sudden transition and those uh, ideal responses, they are also called brick response because all the corners, they are 90 degree. All the changes uh, take place at uh, 90 degree. So when we, uh, try to come up with a transfer function which will uh, be very close to those ideal brick response, uh, then uh, it turns out that there are only few choices available, uh, few mathematical uh, expressions for HS which will uh, approximate those ideal brick responses. And uh, there are three typically uh, encountered uh, uh, responses or the transfer function. First one is called Butterworth approximation, second is Chevy shape approximation, third is elliptic approximation. And by approximation means that they will quite well approximate to the ideal transfer function. Now we will see that uh, what will be the plot or the frequency response of uh, these three classes and try to understand uh, uh, which of them is better and what are their advantages and disadvantages. So if you pick up a Butterworth uh, type of uh, transfer function and you plot with respect to frequency, x-axis is frequency, uh, normalized to certain value and uh, y-axis is uh, uh, transfer function h g omega. So here we see that uh, the, this is for the low pass uh, filter type of transfer function. So we see that uh, the lower frequency, they are getting multiplied by almost one. Uh, in, in this region, you can see that the number is going to be slightly less than one, marginally uh, smaller than one, but nevertheless, it is not exactly one. And then of course, we have certain transition bands starting from almost 0.4 going up to almost 0.6. So keep in mind this uh, wide transition band of 0.2 that we have here for Butterworth. 
and uh, as was pointed out uh, even the same transfer function for example butterover type of transfer function uh, will be classified into various classes based upon the order of the polynomial that appears in the denominator so this is specific response is for a sufficiently high order butterworth filter for uh, low order situation will be even worse we will see uh, sometime back after now if you see the Trebuchet type of uh, approximation that means low pass uh, transfer function plot then here you can see that uh, unfortunately we have ripple in the pass band if you recall the template of the filter specification we pointed out ripple in both uh, pass band and in the stop band but here you can see that the, in the stop band value is very small uh, and the transition you can see is uh, relatively over a narrow band uh, it uh, falls down to a very low value by 0.6 but you can say transition starts almost from 0.5. So here what we have is a narrow transition band at the cost of uh, ripple in the pass band. Now if you see the elliptic type of uh, low pass filter uh, response, then in addition to ripple in the pass band, we have ripple in the stop band also. So in the Chevishev you can see that uh, once it falls to zero, it remains close to zero or ideally zero but here in the elliptic response there will be ripple it will fall to zero and then it will have certain value which will decay uh, which ripple but the good thing over the previous two uh, filter approximation is uh, here you can see the transition is very sharp um, so over a very narrow band it moves from pass band to stop band so there could be, uh, so this is always desirable, a uh, narrow and narrow transition band. There will be hardly any application where one would want a wider transition band. However, there are many applications where ripple in the pass band uh, can be tolerated. They will not be very serious issue. So out of a ripple in the pass band and a transition band width, it is a transition with band width which is more critical and it is always uh, tries to be minimized tries to be reduced to as low as possible but pass band ripple can be reduced and uh, might not have a very serious adverse effect on the system performance so here i have shown uh, all the three at one place so that you can see that indeed the elliptic type of uh, filter they have a very narrow pass band response uh, especially compared with uh, Butterworth and JV shape is somewhere between the Butterworth and uh, elliptic. Now the classification with respect to the components that are uh, used to implement the filter. So there are two major classes, in fact there are only two classes that is passive filter and the active filter. So as was pointed out in the passive filter there will be only passive components, registers, capacitors and maybe inductors also. For example, here we have only registers and capacitors <coughs> and uh, this is a low pass kind of uh, filter. That means all the high frequency they will get shorted out by this capacitor C1. On the right side we have a, a filter which in addition to R and C it also has an op amp uh, which is being used in uh, inverting mode so this will not only carry out the filtering it will also do the amplification so output amplitude will be more than the input for those frequency band where uh, it allows signal to pass now we will uh, talk about the filter classification based upon order so for example if we pick a passive type of filter uh, consisting only of R and C. So here on the left side we have a filter circuit consisting of only one R and C and uh, in this case uh, if you find out the transfer function so for example there will be a transition uh, zone which will decay with the rate of minus 20 dB per decay. However if we uh, use two such RC components in cascade uh, form this uh, overall transfer function this will become of second order 
because here we have uh, two capacitors, so there will be in general uh, two types of uh, uh, S square type of uh, term in the denominator. And that is what will happen if you try to find out the transfer function. And uh, if you plot this, uh, you will see a transition uh, which uh, decays at the rate of uh, minus 40 dB per decade. So obviously this one will be desirable. This will lead to a narrow transition band. But now you can see that the, what is the cost we are paying for that. Cost is that we are now having a bigger circuit, more number of components. Not only that, and since we have more number of registers, so there will be more loss associated with uh, higher order uh, filters also. So when we go for higher order, we uh, invariably gain in terms of the uh, transition band, that means decay, but uh, we also pay in terms of larger circuit size and uh, power reduction. So this is a summary of uh, various classifications uh, based on the frequency response, based on the active or passive and uh, this middle one is based upon discrete or continuous. So here we will have input which will be available all the time but now here you can see that uh, there will be input uh, which will not be available all the time. So input will be fed to the circuit only at certain discrete points. So what we are doing here through this uh, switch is sensing this input only at certain discrete moments. Right? Say, say for example at T1, T2, T3. So only at those discrete moments we are sensing the input here with the help of this switch and then this whole circuit will then produce an output here. Now we will talk about uh, uh, general transfer function. So we have uh, for even for amplifier also we have seen that in general transfer function will have a numerator and denominator uh, with uh, polynomial in S and they can be factorized uh, into uh, first order factor and uh, uh, all the factors in the numerator uh, they give rise to a number what is called zeros of the transfer function and those are the value where the transfer function will become zero. So you can see that at Z1, Z2, Zn the transfer function will be zero. And uh, on, on the other, high, uh, other side in the numerator or oh, sorry in the denominator. So in the denominator we have again uh, those first order factors and uh, those factors uh, the uh, blow out the transfer function. That means they increase the transfer function value uh, towards the infinity. So they are called the poles. And uh, we will see that uh, these uh, pole locations, uh, they will have important uh, effect on the transfer function. For the filter, uh, we always have a numerator uh, order less than that of the denominator. At the base, they should be equal. And uh, this filter uh, order is identified with respect to the order of the denominator uh, polynomial in S. So for example, this transfer function will be called as nth order filter transfer function because we have n number of uh, poles in the denominator. Now as I pointed out, the role of pole is going to be important. For example, if we take the, here the first order filter, because denominator is first order in S. So this is first order uh, transfer function. So simply by looking at this transfer function, one can never see which type of filtering response it will give. For example, in this case, uh, this might uh, lead to high pass kind of uh, filtering response or low pass kind of uh, filtering response. And the same function can represent both type of filters depending upon what is the relation between their zeros and pole. So when zeros is smaller than pole, we have high pass. When pole is smaller than zero, we have low pass type of uh, uh, response. So these coefficients and zero location, they will, uh, coefficient means uh, suppose it were uh, polynomial uh, of higher order. In that case, those coefficients, they of course decide the pole and zero. So that is why I am saying that those coefficients or the pole and zero location, they decide the nature of the filter. Now the 
most important aspect of course of any circuit is uh, designing so in this filter module we will be uh, focusing significantly on design aspects also in addition to analysis so what are the key design steps involved in designing a filter and these are the steps that we will trace out in future classes uh, with respect to some of the filter examples that we will pick up so it always starts from uh, given filter specifications uh, that is also called filter uh, specification template so that is what user will specify to us and then as a designer we will have to uh, follow all these steps so these are the key steps and there will be various uh, sub steps involved which will be elaborated when we take up examples so so first thing uh, of course we will have to uh, decide the nature whether we want active uh, implementation or passive implementation and this can be found out uh, from the gain that is uh, specified in the filter template so based on that we choose uh, active or uh, passive implementation then uh, uh, we have to find out what is the transfer function because once we know the transfer function we can find out uh, how to implement this thing in uh, real life uh, using uh, components so we have to decide uh, whether the transfer function that we will be implementing is butterworth chebyshev or elliptic and this also will be decided based upon the uh, template or the filter specification for example if a user says that uh, no ripple is uh, permitted then one will have to of course choose the butterworth that is the only choice however if uh, ripple is permitted and there is a strict requirement on the transition band then one can go for the chevy shape or maybe even elliptic also then uh, one will have to decide what is the once we decide uh, whether it is butterworth or chevy shape type we have to decide the filter order because that will dictate uh, how many poles we have in the circuit and that will then allow us to go for the implementation so this part uh, step 3 we will trace out uh, for the butterworth and chevy shape type of filters in this lecture so when the filter is decided one has to find out the exact transfer function that means uh, uh, exact uh, uh, polynomial in the denominator or maybe in the numerator for the given transfer function uh, or alternatively the coefficients of the polynomial appearing in the denominator and uh, this part fortunately has been uh, uh, done and extensive tables are available for uh, for both butterworth chevy shape and uh, for elliptic also so once someone has uh, selected the order and chosen the ripple uh, then one can simply pick the all those uh, transfer function from the table that means one can know what will be the coefficients of uh, uh, denominator polynomial and once you know the uh, exact those coefficients then there are formulas for calculating uh, the rc component values available uh, that can be used to implement that so or one can set up the uh, equation also for uh, components rc based upon the uh, transfer function that uh, one has determined in step 4 so this 4 and 5 uh, they have been put in gray because we will be uh, carrying out uh, uh, these steps uh, in future classes but uh, today we will go up to step 3 now some uh, more introduction or more information related with the uh, butterworth uh, type of uh, low pass filter so we pointed out uh, that butterworth type of filter uh, has a smooth transition uh, there is no ripple in the pass band uh, no ripple in the stop band also so we would like to now know that uh, uh, what is the mathematical expression for the butterworth type of uh, filter so this uh, h is the transfer function for butterworth type of filter and they are always given by uh, 1 by square root of 1 plus omega by omega naught 
base power 2n, where n is uh, going to be the Butterworth uh, low pass uh, filter order. So, in this form, uh, you can see that uh, we are not able to see the uh, denominator polynomial, whether it is a square root of something. So, uh, how this is related with the polynomial form of HS that we uh, wrote there. So, answer is that there are certain type of Butterworth polynomials and uh, from those uh, polynomials when we construct the transfer function HS and then finally HG omega and then from them finally when we find the magnitude of the transfer function this is the equation you will get. So keep in mind this uh, what uh, equation 1 gives is not the transfer function rather the magnitude of the transfer function and because we have taken the magnitude that is why we are getting a square root otherwise if you see the uh, normal h s or h g omega there will be no square root and we will have simply polynomial in the denominator. So we will see those things in future classes at this stage we only wanted to see that uh, how this uh, plot of the Butterworth transfer function will vary with the order. So there are a few things to note here. Uh, first thing to note is that uh, whatever may be the order of the whatever transfer function, they all pass through point uh, omega naught such that the magnitude will be 1 by square root 2. That means they will always cross the square root uh, uh, 3 dB point. So this 1 by square root 2 is basically 3 dB point. It will be 3 dB below uh, the highest value which is uh, 1, that means 0 dB. So if you plot the 20 log uh, magnitude of h, we will have 0 here in place of 1 and we will have minus 3 dB in place of uh, this number 1 by square root 2. And this level is going to occur at the same frequency for uh, all the uh, transfer functions that is called uh, omega naught and that is also called 3 dB cutoff frequency for Butterworth. So omega minus 3 dB is equal to omega n and it will be valid for all the and whatever may be the order. So advantage is no ripple in the passband, but of course uh, that does not mean that the value is always going to be 1. You can see that the uh, value is very uh, fast decaying for n is equal to 1 and uh, as the n increases the value also becomes closer and closer towards 1, but there is a no ripple, there is a smooth transition from 1 to certain lower value that is 1 by square root 2. But uh, problem is wider transition band. You can see that uh, for n is equal to 1, there is a gradual decay from 1 to 0. So it will be very difficult for anyone to identify what is the uh, transition band here. But typically, uh, we see that uh, frequency of 2 mega naught, they, are, they fall under pass band. So transition band starts from omega naught onwards. So this is one specific example. Uh, suppose a user has specified a filter template and we have to design this filter. So in this case you can see that uh, we have been specified what is the uh, tolerable decay in the transfer function in the passband which uh, is from 0 to F1. Keep in mind this F1 is not F0 3 dB point, F0 is uh, 3 dB point here somewhere between F1 and F2 but user says that uh, I want uh, decay of 0.4 dB up to 1 megahertz. So this is a uh, certain application is specific and then he wants that uh, transfer function should have decayed by 9 dB at 2 megahertz which is F2. So this is how user has specified uh, this low pass uh, uh, transfer function and now as a designer we have to design it. So from the uh, ripple you can clearly see that this is Butterworth type of uh, filter and uh, then one has to find out what will be the order uh, so that one can find out the transfer function and then pick the exact transfer function from the table which we will see later on. So here uh, in this uh, lecture we will try to find what is the order of Butterworth transfer function which will meet this specification. That means if you plot 
it will fall in this uh, white region uh, that is permitted region for the transfer function right so here a parameter that has to be found out is uh, n and omega naught is also of course not specified but that can also be calculated so let us try to find out what will be the filter order so what we have been given is uh, the magnitude of the transfer function at two frequencies at f1 and f2 they have been specified and that too in db and the highest value keep in mind is 0 db so any value below this is actually negative although i have shown here 3 db but actually it is minus 3 db similarly this value is also actually minus 9 db and uh, this uh, value is also minus 0.4 db so then we try to take the help of these two information to set up equation so transfer function value at f1 is minus 0.45 db and uh, at f2 it is minus 9 so we set up these two equations and uh, then uh, what we have to find out is n but f0 is another unknown that is uh, present here so we have two unknowns f0 and and we have two equations so technically we can solve uh, these two unknowns so we convert them into a normal scale getting rid of the log so we get equation 2 and equation 3 so here you can see that the denominator is uh, f0 in the both the cases so one can divide one equation by another to get rid of uh, this f0 so you can divide equation 3 by 2 to get the ratio of f2 and f1 raised for 2n and that will be equal to 64.2 so f1 f2 they have been specified in terms of number also but here you can see that we just need the relation between uh, them which is f2 is 2 times of f1 exact values are also not required here so when we substitute this f2 is equal to 2f1 it gives rise to 2 raised for 2n is equal to 64.2 and we know that 2 raised for 6 is equal to 64 so and uh, in terms of uh, integers is going to be n is equal to 3 actually one can take n is equal to 4 also uh, that will give a value larger than 64.2 so we try to ensure that what we get here on the left side is equal or more than this then only we will have a uh, filter which will meet the specification or maybe it will be better than that so here then uh, we find that n is equal to 3 is enough one could have taken n is equal to 4 also so if you take n is equal to 3 and uh, plot on this uh, graph you will see that the transfer function will always fall in this permitted region now let us take a talk about the chevy shape low pass type of filter so in general chevy shape uh, low pass type of filter it will have a ripple in both pass band and stop band what was shown there uh, was only the case uh, with the pass band ripple so here you can see that uh, maximum value of course is going to be 1 but it will fall up to a certain lower value decided by additional parameter so here we have three parameters omega naught n order of the uh, filter or the polynomial and epsilon which determines the ripple so this ripple will be given by 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square so there will be this ripple and there is a parameter omega naught we will talk about what is the significance of omega naught and uh, here the transfer function is given by magnitude is given by 1 by square root 1 plus epsilon square cn square omega by omega naught so here this cn they are the chevy shape polynomial so again uh, this is derived from the uh, with the help of chevy shape polynomial uh, in the denominator we get h g omega and when we take magnitude this is what we get so keep in mind what we have uh, shown here in the equation is the magnitude of the transfer function not in the normal form with the polynomial which we will uh, see later on 
So here we will talk about uh, cherry shape polynomial and try to understand that uh, omega naught frequency. So in the Butterworth type, we saw that omega naught is a frequency from where all the transfer function of all the order will pass and their value will always be uh, minus 3 dB below the maximum value. So here also there is a frequency point through which all the cherry shape polynomial uh, will pass where you can see that the Chevy shape polynomial, they are given by this uh, uh, expression. This is the compact expression, but this can be expanded and it will lead to polynomial of uh, various degree, of uh, first degree, second degree, third degree. So if uh, frequency is less than omega naught, then this is given by this expression, cos and cos inverse omega by omega naught. When uh, frequency is greater than that critical frequency omega naught, then it is given by cos hyperbolic and into cos hyperbolic inverse omega by omega naught. So in this uh, compact form, they are given by two expression, but they are also represented in polynomial form. So if you take those polynomials and try to plot them, what you will see that they again all pass through uh, frequency uh, that is called omega naught. Here we have uh, shown the x axis normalized with respect to omega naught. Otherwise, this one frequency is basically omega naught. So, at that frequency, they all pass. And the maximum value is 1, lowest possible value is given by this uh, 1 by uh, 1 plus uh, epsilon square. So, on the left side, we have Chebyshev polynomial cn square. On the right hand side, transfer function, filter transfer function obtained from those. Chebyshev polynomial. So here also you can see that uh, their final decay starts from frequency omega naught. So in this case, typically passband is decided or, or defined up to this omega naught, the frequency from where they all will start final decay. And uh, this order also uh, conveys the number of uh, ripples. So for example, for n is equal to 2, there are two extrema possible. Here is one extremum, second extremum is here, but for n is equal to 3, we have three extremums, one here at the largest value, second here and third here before they start the queue. So for it, suppose uh, low pass Trevishev type of filter specification has been given here, then we have to find out what is the order. So here of course we will also be specifying with the ripple how much ripple is tolerable in the passband. So for example, 1 dB is the tolerable ripple and bandwidth is 5 megahertz. That means uh, F0 or the corresponding omega naught will be related with this number 5 megahertz. And attenuation at 10 megahertz, that means uh, transfer function value must have uh, come down to minus 30 dB at 10 megahertz. So in this case, we have to find out what is the filter order. So we already know the transfer function given by this, but here we know that uh, we have epsilon. So before we are able to find out uh, order n, we have to find out uh, epsilon also. Omega naught already has been uh, specified, that is 2 pi into uh, 5 megahertz. So we first find out the uh, epsilon value by equating it to 1. Uh, actually, it is. 20 log 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square is equal to minus 1. So what we have been given is this value. This is minus 1 dB. So y axis in dB is minus 1 dB. So that equation uh, will finally lead to this. That means epsilon square should be 0.259. And if you find out epsilon, it value will be 0 0.509. So this gives us uh, epsilon. And uh, F0 value we have been given 5 megahertz. That means omega naught is going to be 2 pi into 5 uh, uh, mega revolutions per second. So once we know this thing, what we have uh, uh, we can do is we can uh, take this uh, transfer function and uh, equate it to uh, uh, minus 30 dB. This last information given at 10 megahertz. So at 10 megahertz, its value is uh, minus 30 dB. So this, when simplified, will give rise to this equation, which says that n should be greater than uh, 3.66. So n will be taken as uh, 4. 
we will round it off to the next highest uh, integer so that uh, this gives uh, at least this much or a better performance. So this is how we find out the filter order and in the future classes we will study filter a little bit in more detail from analysis point of view and then we will uh, trace the design steps mentioned in this class in more detail. So you can find out all these materials in the Rajavi chapter 14 or uh, Sidney Smith 7th uh, edition chapter 16. So if you have any question you can ask.